I have had to find ways to implement organization to make it work for me because it's just a necessity. If there's any incline and we were pulling any weight, it just wouldn't work. We couldn't do it. What is he doing? What is going on? Hailing. This is crazy. It just started hailing. <laughs> did it. I did it. Today is Jason's last day of Christmas vacation. Tomorrow he goes back to work and in addition to going to Branson, celebrating Christmas, doing all of those things, the last few days they have spent working in our pasture. We decided there's a section of our pasture, our main pasture, that was wooded. And we made the decision to clear that section. It was a small wooded area, but it was really preventing the pasture from being able to do what it needed to do for our cattle. And so it's been a huge job. And like I said, the sun's getting ready to go down on the very last day. So I'm gonna show you what they did and let them tell you a little bit about it. So this part of our property is all the way up, just to give you context, you walk all the way up from the house. Those are the bees, beehives right there. We have a smaller pasture across there with some cattle. And then this was our big pasture. And it has always, pretty much always had cows in it. I can't think of a time it was ever totally at rest since we got our dairy cow. Mm -hmm. And it just, um, it's not huge. Our big, two thirds of an acre, there you go. So we call it our big pasture because it is Triangle. our biggest. Yeah. But this area was pretty unusable. Yeah, so you can kind of see how we did the first wave of knocking down uh, the trees, the honeysuckles and the autumn olives. Um, anything that's sticking up that's short, that was from the first time we have done it, um, or as honeysuckle. And so basically we're going to come through with the tractor and try to grab it out by the roots. The um, persimmon trees that we took last time, I took down to the ground so the tractor can come around and, and move around easily. And then all the tall stumps are the ones that we did. And uh, Joe was telling me uh, the other day, he was like, you know, yeah, you're going to cut some trees down there. There's not many trees. It's not a big deal. But then you get going and it's three days. What's this three days for? Four. This is our fourth full, mostly full day of working on it. And it just is a lot of work clearing it, you know. Um, so anyway, the idea is that we get it cleared out. We've left some strategic trees. That tree that has the rope on it yet is going to come down. Um, we don't need that tree. And then we're going to go and push back our fence row too so that essentially as much as possible without taking really nice big trees out of the woods, we're going to be able to have grass all the way up to the fence. And so um, the idea is maybe if we uh, think we're going to stay that we'll expand about an acre and a half, I think we said um, that way. Uh, it's kind of a weird trapezoid type shape. Well, because we would, if there was more usable land, it wouldn't just be an acre and a half. But the reason it is only an acre and a half is because our land at the bottom is very steep, too steep to have livestock on it. Uh, the, our livestock, yeah. Yeah. So the, um, the plan then, the next step would be to put some electric fencing here and to put pigs in this yeah. area. Yeah, let them, let them tear it up a little bit. Whatever is left. Yeah. And then after pigs come, then we will plant seed. Well, believe it or not, it's been several days since I recorded that last uh, video for you guys. How long has it been? Probably been a week. <laughs> I've been really struggling with keeping up with YouTube, but we, I, I think we're getting back in the routine. Of course, the routine is about to change because we have a baby who's coming soon. But currently, we are back to homeschooling. Yeah, lots of good things. Back in the routine, but it is Saturday again. And the pasture work has resumed, so I will show you quickly what they're doing there. And then I thought I could show you some more of the rearranging I've done in my bedroom to get ready to add another baby in there. Because when you live in a small house, everything has to have a space. There's just no wasted space. So I've had to do a little rearranging to get ready for that. But it's time for our monthly giveaway of Shepherd's Crook Coffee. This is really exciting because they started offering an Ethiopian bean. And this is the first time ever. They sent us some to try. And they have a 
one bag that they're going to give away to one of you. So Jason and I have pretty much only drank Honduras since we first tasted Shepherd's Crook coffee a couple years ago at the Homestead Expo that we met them at. We just really like the Honduras flavor. But we're like, we're open-minded, you know. So they sent us the Ethiopian to try and we both love it. In fact, Jason was saying we might have to switch our auto ship to the Ethiopian for a while. It's so good and it is a little lighter of a flavor. We really like it. So that is this month's giveaway. Come here, sis. It's an Ethiopian bean. So, what's up? Did you fall? Okay, Lydia fell down. She needed a little mama love. Okay, so we're gonna do this differently this time. We're going to do a raffle copter for this giveaway. Do you guys remember raffle copter? You just click on the link in the description box and that will take you to where you can just enter in. Um, yes, I wanna win this giveaway. And maybe I'll think of some other options for more entries. Um, for a free bag of coffee. And of course, as always, we have discount codes if you want to order from them. Um, I will put all that information in the description box to remind you. Sad Lydia and I are going to find Papa. She kind of fell down, but she didn't want snuggles from me. So, um, This is my husband, and this is his truck. Oh! We've never told you about the truck. I guess not. We now are the owners of a truck, a new to us truck, and it's finally registered. We patiently waited until the new year because we had to get some things fixed on it so there's no reason to register it right away because it wasn't immediately drivable. Not to mention it would cost us a year in taxes. And then it's another year in taxes <laughs> that you're paying for a vehicle that wasn't quite driving yet. Right. So it's yes. everything but you still are finishing up the four wheel drive. So right? let's, can we get a little bit more of a full story? Yeah, of course, yeah. there's a Great. story. Of course. Hey, of course it's a story. So we have some really awesome friends uh, and that's kind of where the story starts. So we are going to wait to the... story, because I'm telling wait. you, these kids, they're having so much fun. Elsie is... Do you want to go get on the tractor? Elsie's giving rides on okay. the lawnmower. We have a cart on the back that the kids can climb on, and it just mows around. The, the mower doesn't actually mow the grass, it just gives children rides, right? Well, no, it mows if we <laughs> want it to mow. <laughs> it's a multifunctional machine. Yeah, our four-wheeler isn't running quite right, uh, and we're not dealing with that yet, and that runs, so yeah. voila. It's the four-wheeler. It's the take trash to the dumpster mode. Can we go for a ride? No. So, a friend of ours bought this as a second vehicle for their um, business, and um, when his main truck went down, he was using it. And uh, something went wrong in, in the drivetrain transmission for the four-wheel drive uh, and basically caused some damage. And so then it sat still at his house for a little while while his truck was getting fixed. It was kind of a, a long story. I believe it was a God story because a couple people came together to try to help somebody that was in need who normally they would be the ones that would be helping everybody. They've blessed us. You've seen them before. They're, they're amazing. Um, anyway. So then there came an opportunity where um, he asked if I was interested in the truck. We have this amazing agreement. We worked it out. We're still in the middle of um, upholding our end. And so uh, here it is. And so now it's on the road. Uh, the four wheel drive isn't 100%. There's a one part missing, uh, but we haven't decided whether we want to do new or used on that. And then we're fully functioning. It's, been, it's really great to have a truck. It it's is. It's hard to have a farm without a truck. Right. There's, we kept trying to use our van as a truck. <laughs> right. Which is fine. Yeah. But, like, we need to go somewhat mildly off-road, at you know, at times. And we just would wait till the weather was, you know, capable of allowing us to do that. And then, you know, if there's any incline and we were pulling any weight, it just wouldn't work. We couldn't do it. What is he doing? Silas, this project was to put the new tire on the wheelbarrow. Putting the new tire on the yeah, wheelbarrow. Yeah, well, getting it outside of the chicken coop because we had oh, locked man. up the dogs in there for a little bit. Nice. Right, <laughs> Who can make a pepper dance? Woohoo! <laughs> you feeding pigs yeah. already, Leo? You're on it today. It's like probably only something I don't even know what time it is 
Okay, let's go take a peek at the pasture. Okay, this is the progress. Look at how much they have done. Look at all the stacks of wood. Amazing. Bella is trying to put my trying to stick headphones <laughs> through her coat. Um, she's taking some electric off some hot wire because we are trying to be frugal and reuse it instead of just buying new. We don't need to force trains. So she's taking a piece off to fence in an area for the pigs. Jason has taken more trees down. Those two trees over there behind April. These April is down. so curious These are she follows down Bella. Today, these, two. these are coming down. No, we're we are limited Eventually, time. this little cow shed, which was here when we bought the place, that's coming down and it's going to be replaced with something nicer. So you can see these trees from long ago before us, they were, <laughs> the barbed wire fence just grew right into these poor trees. Um, yeah, they're, they're coming down and all these stumps here, which are also holding barbed wire, they're coming down. And our goal here is to have a an attractive fence instead of this mess we're just trying to pretty things up a little bit and so we're going to straighten out that fence and probably make it a wood fence with the electric uh, hot wire on the inside of it so that the outside looks nice there's another tree that Jason took down and all the lumber that we can is going to be used for siding we're going to turn into siding for our house so it's just a pretty cool full circle thing here day today so I hope you guys can hear me over this wind um, my microphone doesn't like wind a whole lot but I'm trying to talk to you when the gusts die down the wind makes it feel a lot colder than it was yesterday even though the temperature reads the same it's like in the 40s but woof, nothing like wind in an overcast day to make you shiver a little you got the tire off yeah Good. so I don't know maybe it's just our homestead but it certainly feels like if there's going to be a challenge, you're going to bump into it. I know. So we were encouraged. We've been watching the Justin Rhodes 100 Days Building a Homestead or uh, something like that. Yeah. And we've been encouraged by it because he's like, oops, another problem. Whoops, another problem. Oh, now the tractor won't start or this won't work. And we're like, oh, yeah, that feels real. <laughs> it feels familiar. That is very familiar <laughs> because that's like our life yeah. lately anyway. It's just yeah so here's the Poor thing Jason. like i now actually what? hoarded wheels and tires you know just in case i might need it in the future great a tire that holds air for the wheel barrel and the bear wheel bearings i spent time you know getting the wheel bearings freed up and moving around because this one is starting to like shred totally no good yeah okay? that's trash right so then i get it out and i'm like okay great let's Let's go to put the new one on, and that was a little bit of an ordeal because we, you know, used, uh, Joe helped us to make the handle whatever anyway, and so then... It doesn't fit. You're kidding it's me. It's the wrong diameter. No. I'm sorry. So I could... Ugh. Grill out it? Basically, it's like, sometimes it just doesn't pay to be cheap. Mm -hmm. Because they sell these for, I, I don't know, $25, $30. Can you today? You have to run a buck could, anyway. But here's the deal. I run around buying new stuff, then I have no money, yeah. and I have a bunch of stuff. This is always the so it's battle. The, it's like the battle. It's like, okay, where is the balance <laughs> of it makes sense to fork out some capital to... I know. I just talked to Bella who's taking the piece. hot wire off the fence instead yeah. of buying more. Right. You know, I'm like, well, maybe I could use... Oh, I could. Ooh. This oh. ratchet I broke. Why do you still have that? Why is it not in the trash? Because I'm fixing my wheelbarrow with it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I certainly could. Well, yeah, go That's for it. That's reality. It's happening. But the question right is, there. should I? Give it a try. If it doesn't go easily, then abandon. I mean, I've done sillier things.
After Leo feeds his pigs, he sucks the grain for the next day. And look at this crowd. Look at all those chickens. I think you're the most popular guy in the chicken yard right now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, man. Look at my garlic peeping up here. Do you see it, guys? you see it? Peeking through the straw. I had to cover it because anywhere chickens can get, they'll dig up your stuff. Wow. I cannot believe how cool it feels outside. It is so much nicer in here. Whoops, camera. I'm thinking it might be a day for potato ham soup. I have bone broth that is in my crock pot. I have leftover ham because we ran by all these just to pick up like a quick meal the other night and that's like our fast food. We'll go pick something up, you know, instead of hitting fast food restaurants, which are too expensive. And they had spiral hams $10 off. So the spiral ham itself was $28 and then we got $10 off of that. So it was $18 for a big spiral ham. That's not something we normally buy, but we bought one. I may have him go back and get another one because it was really good and so easy. And right now, easy is what I'm liking. So I have some of that left. I could do a spiral ham <laughs> and potato soup. That sounds good because it's cold. What is going on? Hailing. This is crazy. It just started hailing. It went from yep. clear nothing to hail. Just a minute. A minute. <laughs> I was like, what's that noise? Like, no, that's not rain. It's crazy, guys. That is crazy. It's what? not even that cold. It's like 40 degrees, though. Okay. That's some weird weather that I I don't think we expected any precipitation on the forecast. I wouldn't call it precipitation just, because it's hailing. Lacey just went in the barn and she's like, forget that. They're still working on that tire. Did they not notice it's hailing? No, they probably do. Pepper's like, get me in the house. He's yeah, a fair weather dog. We'll see. Look at him, he's like, Help! Mom, mom let me in. <laughs> I'm being assaulted. <laughs> Pepper, is that, is that too hard to be out what there? What is that, Pepper? Like Something come down on your head? Oh, get that off of you. Here, you want to go to your blanket? Your Leo dear will, old blanket. Leah will fluff it up for you. What is that about? That's hail, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, everybody's coming in now. Now I wish I had that suit made already that I was talking about. Um, it's hailing. Yeah, a ratchet hail. Oh, no. <laughs> what? What's your thumbs up about? You got the tire on? We got it. So an old uh, tent post. No Like way. a hollow pipe for spacers, and the ratchet handle. A <laughs> tent but you can't tell. Look at that. Look. Ratchet look. Handle. Look at this thing. That is awesome. It's as good as it needs to be. Twenty-five bucks. Boom. Or free. Good job. Yeah, good job, Silas. I got all my friends coming back in. Like that is hail. crazy. Like, what is that? It was hail. That's hail. And it, it feels like ice. Lydia got it's, scared, so I gave her a cracker. Oh, did out. that scare you? The hail? Why don't you snuggle it's up? It's in her cow. hair. <laughs> so not in mine. Up. Because I went under the cup. Under the covers. Me too. But my hair is wet and melted that was in my so hair. That so fast surprising. Wait, did it just stop? No, there's still a little going. It's gone. Leo said, what's that sound? He said, no, that's not rain. It was hail. Now it's like rain because it melts. It's turning it into the rain. Well, but like, no, it's get. just a light rain. And then we're getting hit. Like, no, it's ice. James picks it. It's ice. That was a surprise. Do you ever remember hail, James? Um, no. I don't it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> Did you ever think about that? That ice hits you at its maximum. It's horrible. Velocity. What? As it, as it the fact it's going as fast as it can because if you think of how many feet it falls from. <laughs> That's crazy. We got rid of our boot box for a while. We're lining the boots up. I'm, it makes the hallway feel a lot more spacious. I like it. As long as kids put them back the way they're supposed to. Right, Silas? Yep. 
Oh, he's moving to coveralls. Look out. It's cold outside. It is cold. Actually, if you're going up toward the pasture, will you bring Bella some warmer hat or something? Well, it's another day. This video, this video is going to take me days to get through. Yesterday ended up getting busy and I just forgot all about you guys. Are you catching the theme here? My brain is just on other things than YouTube, but I still do love you guys. Okay, so when you have a large family in a small house, you have got to be organized. I am not, I was not born a naturally organized person. I have a friend who is super organized. But that is just not me. However, I have had to find ways to implement organization to make it work for me because it's just a necessity. I suppose we could just live in chaos, but I, I just, I, I find that I'm a product of my environment and if things are in place, it's easier for me to be at peace and if mom's at peace, kind of trickles down to everybody else. So I have um, just learned to train myself to be organized. So that being said, when you're bringing in another human being into a small house, you've got to make some room for them. So let me show you what I am in the works of for baby number 10. So this is the corner of the bedroom that we have. Um, currently Benjamin's in this crib and he will stay in this crib he sleeps great. Somebody asked me how he sleeps at night. He weaned himself months ago on his own and he sleeps all night in his crib. In fact, I find this so interesting, but he is my only toddler who really does not sleep well if he gets in bed with us. You know, other kids like to sleep with mom or whatever. They'll want, to, we'll have to kind of work on that. Not this kid. He only sleeps well if he is in his own bed. And it has been this way since he was very small. So yeah, I'm not gonna be taking him out of this crib. I will show you the the baby bed plan that I have in just a minute. Sorry for being winded. I was actually running around <laughs> getting ready to go when I remembered that I hadn't done this. So bear with me. Um, okay, so this is the closet that we have here. And I told Jason one of the things on my to-do list is, uh, my to-do list for him, I should say, is to get the doors on this closet before baby comes. So we'll see how that, how that goes. Uh, the bottom two shelves are the game shelves. Then we have craft supplies and school supplies at the bottom. This is actually, um, well, this will be the baby cover. Isn't that wonderful? It's so soft. Some friends of ours gave this to us. That is a car seat cover is what I'm trying to say. But other than that, this is just a big basket of blankets that um, once the doors are on, that will have to go somewhere else. They are bifold doors. So... Uh, I'm trying to think if you can imagine halves and halves. They come out just nicely next to this crib, but of course we can't have stuff down there. Um, okay, so anyway, bottom is the area that kids access. And then the rest of it is um, little, little people clothes. So I have Benjamin. Um, I just found this is actually, if you find, come across any old deep freezers, they have these nice metal... Uh, wire baskets in them. I use them in my pantry and I brought one in here. They're just so sturdy and convenient. So this is all of his like shirts and one piece things. I just throw them all in there. <laughs> Sweaters. Ah, I used to fold all my baby's clothes but I just don't have it in me lately. And the, a basket for pants and then all of his little socks and things. And then the rest of this will be for the new baby. So I haven't decided what's gonna go where because I haven't brought in all of the clothes. I actually brought in just a few newborn gowns of boy. And then today we are going to my in-law's house for a birthday party, great grandma's birthday party. And my newborn girl clothes tub is there. So I'm gonna bring that back with me and then I'll choose just a few newborn girl outfits. Then once baby comes, come on in, says I'm here. Once baby comes, then uh, we can wash up the rest of that clothes and I'll figure out where it goes. But for now, I just have these bins here with some other things thrown in them. And then even this really big one is empty. So it's just ready to go. And then this is my diaper caddy. So I do um, disposables for nighttime or nap time and when we leave the house. And then I have these um, pocket diapers 
for other times. So those are in the back and the disposables are in the front. And then the top of that is just some extra um, like supply storage that I need. If I end up needing more baby storage, I can use that shelf too. But I also have under this bed. Um, I don't really, I just have one tub of Benjamin's pajamas under the bed. So that's more storage that I could slide bins under if needed. Okay, the last thing Bella is helping me to show you guys this because the last thing I want to show you is where we're going to put the little newborn bed. So I have this really neat bed that our friends the Markhams gave us. It folds up. Um, it just folds in half so you can carry it with you. But it has a really nice mattress. And there's also a net that goes over the top. which So you, you could carry it outside and not get bugs in it. But I call it a toddler net. Because then if they throw a toy, the baby can't get hurt. But anyway, Jason's making me a stand so that I can have this right here next to me when I'm sleeping at bed height if I just want to gently lay the baby in there um, then it, then he or she will be right next to me so that's the plan for now two babies are going in here two ba Lydia says two babies are going in here thank you Bella um, so that's the plan for now of course Benjamin actually does have a bed waiting for him we have an empty bunk bed so once he is ready to graduate out of the crib, we will move him into the boys' room, into his bunk bed, and then this baby will move into that crib. So we have a plan. What do you think? In the Good other plan? baby is little, it goes in the little baby. The other baby goes in the little baby bed. That's right. Woo, careful there, sister. It's wiggly. Lydia said to me yesterday, our baby takes such a long time to get here. <laughs> We were reading a book about a baby that was born. She just couldn't believe how long ours took. So anyway, let's head to the birthday party. It's time to go. That's that's what I'm doing. Oh, someone asked about, will I do things differently um, with the birth? I was set up in the living room last time. Yes, my plan is just this bed. I can have this bed to shift over because, you know, like we said, it is a, a lot baby of room there. Rock and boogie scrub those scrub These kids are ready to go. I'm very excited. Stop. Don't forget your card for Gma. <laughs> Lydia, do you have your card for Gma? You have two pairs of shoes there. Okay, so we're gonna scoot this bed over. This is my plan for the birth. Scoot this bed over to there, and have him take out the rocking chair stuff. And then this right here is the uh, birth pool which is not very wide, it's deep, but it's not very wide. So it will nicely fit in that corner there um, and you'll still be able to move around it once the bed is over and the rocking chair stuff is gone. So that is my plan so that I'm able to birth here in the bedroom and you know, have all of that, um, just have it be cozy in here and comfortable and have that set up whenever I need it. So. That's my plan. I'll keep you posted. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. How old are you? Happy birthday to you. Good luck, Grandma. Okay. One, two, three. Let's both go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>